Bam, bam, bam. Hello, I am Tracy Lynn, all one word, Tracy Lynn. I used to say I'm also known as V-Cat. You like that? A little V? Two, dos, two dos, <laughs> two dos. Uh, I am here in Columbus after I had just received some treatment down in Logan. I'm very excited today. That's some good news. I received a little bit more of what it was that I desired. And I like when that happens. Don't you? I'm going to make a very small video of a place that I used to come once in a while. Would complain the majority of the time before we would come that I didn't want to come. Okay. Four reasons. Four reasons. <laughs> and one of them was Tracy Lynn had a lifetime of being around what a large portion of the psychological community <laughs> would say alcoholism. It's challenging for me sometimes to talk about that only because of my love for people who, through conversations, it's acknowledged have that going on sort of like in their life. Did you ever find that going on in your life? There's things that others do a lot and it's not them because God evidently is showing you something that's very attractive about these people or a person, but there is something maybe that they do on a regular basis especially and you would rather do something else that both of you are mutually, or all of you are mutually, interested in doing and can leave something like alcohol. Maybe to another day? Because I drink once in a while. I just, uh, I have my issues. Uh, if you would say, I have my own personal thoughts on trying to stay away. So I don't want to talk about it too much while I'm here because this is a pubish bar restaurant, food place, where um, a lot of people in the trans community used to come and gather. I don't know if they still do, okay, LGBTQ and all the other initials, letters, <laughs> um, would come here to hang out. And it's noted to some people as a gay bar. And I had gone through my life, are you there with me? I didn't want to be gay, that's number one. And I have learned through a lot of psychological studies, conversations, that it could be very possible that I am not gay. Okay. I am a woman. <laughs> yeah, I am a woman. Okay. In a worldly sense. But when I get into biblical, I love the Holy Bible and psychology together. Okay. I would have to say that Christhood, in many ways, is way more, not what you think, maybe, appealing. And I think I'm very closer to fitting a description of such a child of God <laughs> who loves all kinds of clothing, wearing makeup, and nice jewelry. Someday I'm hoping to have real diamonds real diamonds in my life <laughs> the genuine and I'll talk about that maybe sometime but um, meanwhile one of the social places that uh, I used to network with other trans women which is people psychologically that might not have the entirety of their physical existence in alignment together I spent my whole entire life Wishing I would have been born a girl because it always appeared girls have the kind of fun that I'm interested in. And uh, around the guys, I like them for a lot of different reasons, okay? Don't think just physical, don't think just sex, okay? I like guys for different reasons. <laughs> and uh, I, there, I'm sure there's more going on if you get into psychology. It just so happens that what is perceived as a more masculine energy, a lot of times, whether it's in a boy or a girl, a physical human being, there are certain traits that are very attractive to me that I don't necessarily want to be myself. And sometimes it's challenging 
to explain to someone else, especially if you live in a dominancy here in the human race with a lot of different beliefs. I've always tried to remain open and I'm grateful I did. I don't remain open to other people's idea of what I should be doing with uh, my existence and, you know, especially now because I'm starting to acknowledge that I pretty much have formed in a manner that says, no, I didn't figure everything out, but I figured out a lot of the things that I struggled with ever since I was born. I was very much into going to gay nightclubs and bars in the beginning. I was open to it. And as time went on from the beginning, I started to realize that I was now ready to begin living differently. And I wanted to do other endeavors. And especially when it comes to entertainment, I wanted to do things much differently than I used to. I felt a condemnation coming upon my skull, under my conscience, for far too long. And I don't necessarily like uh, being in the presence of others uh, who especially say in my personal life, you know, to keep it about the music because I'm about life and many other things. And what it means to me, and that is the truth, uh, there's so many things I would have loved to enjoy with others. And I was starting to realize that I had the honor in going through many social hangouts and learning more about uh, the person that kind of was inside my brain psychologically. It helped me to better understand that being the trans part of myself, if you would, trans woman girl, sissy, <laughs> tea girl. <laughs> I'm not a cross-dresser because I dress appropriately to my thoughts to the better of my ability. If anything, I'm an underdresser because if you acknowledge the way I would love to dress the majority of the time, you would probably be saying in many ways, why do you even live anywhere close in the manner that you do? Why are you here? <laughs> Did you ever meet somebody and say that? I'm a, at least one person said that to me and made me feel really good. What planet did you come from, you know? And they said it very attractively. Yeah, yeah. I'm very well to do when I hope, <laughs> you know. So check this out. And I don't want to go on too much about this right now, especially when I'm doing a video and an establishment involved, kind of like the Roadhouse Cafe that I recently did a video on. I really tried to be respectful of my opinion about public alcohol establishments and me being, you know, me using my gifts and my talents that the Lord has blessed me with to market or sell something that, uh, really, truly uh, would rather just remain neutral on and I'm not, not say anything bad about it, but know that I have a history of alcohol struggles personally. And when it gets involved with people that you love a lot, then I become very sensitive and I try to realize that I just simply don't want to use my kiss and my talents to promote it. And I don't want to be normally hanging out there. I'd like to do something that I perceive or interesting. Many hobbies I have and many desires of things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Okay? And that I have not. And don't ask me why. There's all kinds of reasons why. So I'm here. I'm going to try to leave that part of it out. But I would say that when I came to establishments like this, it's difficult because I don't know about here, but a lot of times. I haven't developed yet what are ways that I could be in a social environment that largely dominates uh, the domination of sales and marketing and the purpose of the venue is to sell alcohol. And I don't have interest in doing that uh, publicly. I do drink wine, I think I did twice since 2014. Um, I've been talking about when my project is done, I want to get a bottle of champagne and I want to stay home where I know I'm safe 
and I don't want to be working on my music or project while I'm doing it. I want to just enjoy having a glass of champagne or two and, you know, maybe capture, I ain't gonna lie to you, maybe capture a little buzz, right? <laughs> you know? Um, but I don't want to have alcohol be uh, toxicity to the life that I long for on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So it's not an importance to me where at one time it was uh, something that was a large portion of my Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, and a hangover Sunday and most of Monday, okay? For a lot of years, not just for a week or two. And I begged God for years to take alcohol away from me, okay? And I cried out that I didn't want anything to happen to me to be perceived as a tragedy for that to happen. In other words, I wanted the alcoholism away from me before something would happen that would be perceived as destruction would occur to me or somebody else. I've often prayed, please don't let me ever hurt anybody else I'm drinking. Like, I don't want to do that anyway. But in the event that I would, okay, don't think that I wouldn't have been affected. I don't want to hurt somebody because of my neglectance, what I perceive as neglectance, okay? I don't believe anybody does. If you perceive it as neglectance, you don't want to purposely go out then and see somebody else suffer because of your neglectance. Now, accidents happen, and that's a lot different. You know, you're trying to go through life, and you don't want to be in, stuck in a pain and suffering. So forgiveness in self is very important. This is not necessarily a self-help video speech. Just trying to give a little bit of insight of where I was at the time. A lot of times the person I was staying with, they had to keep on encouraging me. Come on, come out with us. And I would say, you know, why can't we do something else? I want to do something else. And it depends where a lot of people are. They seem to be an okay environment to meet in. Uh, I would say it wasn't necessarily my idea of what I wanted to do. I went along because Believe it or not, despite of everything I say and things that occurred, I loved the person very much, okay? And I would have to say that I viewed them as my, my dad, you know, my father. It's more like a, a father I always wanted. I would have to say that I adopted a position of daughter, baby girl, into this person's life. So with that being said, also, it was very hard for me because I was not introduced to this stuff sooner in my life. Difficulty with psychological acknowledgments and differences of how I perceive transgenderism through transsexual females who actually want to fall out to transition outwardly, what's in their brain, and cross-dressers and everything else that is going on within all of that, including, but not limited to, uh, sexuality. It was difficult in my struggle, and because I was living in the circumstances that I was, I realized boundaries and time. God, in my opinion, in many areas in my brain, does not work overnight graceful steps. Nobody really knows how distant we are brain-wise from any form of truth, let alone variances of perception and what is being generated from another existence of a life form. I'm going to go ahead and want this to be a long video. I would say that I have really had the awesome opportunity, though not many, I got to meet other transsexual females that I viewed as absolutely gorgeous, which gave me hope, especially considering from where I was at my starting gate, so to speak, just being in their presence and listening to their brief testimony and seeing them inspired uh, hope that maybe, you know, I'll be able to learn from them speaking in their way, present with me, their mannerisms, if you will, and their openness, their willingness to be open to me about maybe what might be perceived as silly questions of 
really helped me along a lot. And I would have to say that when it comes to the cross-dressing community, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of them that had a hell of a sense of humor. And I have adopted, adapted, now what would be the perfect, what would be the right way to say this? I kind of, their sense of humor kind of uh, became part of me. I've learned to have a greater sense of humor through my transitional journey of life by being around other people like cross-dressers. Especially when it wasn't a physical relationship, I could kind of like be friends with others and paid attention and a lot of them made me think of things a little bit differently. Though I don't feel the same way identical as another person, I realize that I, there's a lot of commonality, you know. There's so many different categories of humans when you get into conversations of that. And people are at different places in their minds as to what they would like to do. Some of them are, you know, all in, I have to transition as soon as I can. Some will take baby steps, some will cross-dress, go back and forth. For some, it's more of a sexual pleasure. And though I was uh, always a sexual existence, sort of, myself, and I was into adult entertainment for a season of time, uh, I am a very open mind. However, in my own personal life, um, I, I can't really explain it. But I'm not as interested as maybe some other people may be, <laughs> whether to talk about it or to act upon it. <laughs> uh, chemistry, chemistry, there's a lot more involved. <laughs> you know? So here's the thing, check this out. I am going to walk over here and I'm going to just show some video I would like to keep with me. I don't know what my future plans, so really at this time, because I'm still working on my music project, I still plan on stopping by uh, what they call girls night out every once in a while. Maybe not here. I was going to, um, and I've been so saturatedly busy uh, working on my project. I am not 100% against stopping at a venue that sells alcohol, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Especially if I'm driving myself because I can come and go whenever I want. So, hi, how's everyone doing? Nice to see you. Now I'm just going to hang out for a little while. I got some water, you know, or if they have juice or something, okay, a diet Pepsi, <laughs> you know. And then when you feel kind of, it's time, goodbye, I got this to go. <laughs> you know, um, I find it kind of difficult sometimes um, that when I'm talking, sometimes people misunderstand. Okay, I think sometimes we're going to see some people play music. I play music, and there are singers, songwriters, and entertainers, etc. And there's often times that I said to myself, right there, when I was looking at their profile, saying, oh, "Yeah, I wish he played nicer establishments." And it doesn't matter if it's a big band name, you know, recording artist worldwide, or if it's somebody who is more local or regional, so to speak. I, I say the same thing a lot of times about a lot of people. It's, it's a shame, you know, that's one reason I don't want to be stuck in any circumstance that I have to do stuff. I, I really have learned through my studies, details of environment and the kind of people you're around and what's going on. There's many of them. It matters. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Sad, it matters. And when we shrug our shoulders, I don't know what else to do, and we proceed to go forth anyway, guess what happens? If we were completely honest, we're not as fully happy as we could be. And I want to be happy always. I don't know the answers, and there was times I would say, well, why don't we like go somewhere else? 
know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what to say, bowling, roller skates, a pub, is there, I don't know, help me out here. And uh, a lot of people, they were pretty much into hanging out, sitting down, having a little bit of a bite to eat, and a few social drinks. And um, so I would go, and a lot of times I would watch. And I, especially the person that talked me into coming. And I would often be very grateful that I was present. And understand that if it wasn't for that person, I don't know what would have happened to me because I did not know how to take care of myself. And what I mean is it was adjusted to me ways, the way of life to take care of myself, but it was not the way that was best. And there was a lot of issues uh, that occurred and a person's brain, especially you know, as God's working on it, you start to withdraw. And when the rest of the world isn't there with you psychologically, it's your problem. It's not the world around you's problem. And I've often said to God when I was working on my music project, if people really understood that that is wrong, God is what's just. God is what's right. You see, when a person has a problem, we all have a problem. And I've said to God, use me to show them how true that is. You see, I really genuinely, truly wanted to live. And I was honest, I don't know how, I need help. And I went through fucking hell in my own way. And now I'm in a very dirty area of the country instead of a tropical fucking paradise. I'm learning biblically heavenly er exist the moment you become the book of revelations and the people in the country that are causing the greater problems acknowledge to fucking back the hell away from a child of God before they lose the only life they may ever have. By the way, I'm in Columbus right now, and for anybody who hears this message, get on it. Drive down Interstate 70 and smell the stench that has a, what is causing the problem. Fix it. It sucks to be stuck in traffic knowing you can't run from the smell. They didn't provide us a mask or oxygen tank to fucking goddamn breathe as you pass through the city. What is it? It smells stinky like New Jersey did at a spot. I used to remember. I don't know if it's like sulfate or something. In science class, it kind of is a smell. It's gross. And it's strong. In the last two days I passed through Columbus, I could smell it. And I'm thinking to myself, how can people live like this? Governor of the state of Ohio, the position. This message is for you. It's open and obvious to Tracy Lynn Michael and the God form in my head, which is more than one person and life form, that your leadership abilities out here fucking suck sucks. It suck. It sucks. I shouldn't even be out here in Ohio. That's what I would think when I would come here a lot of times. I'm from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I'm Pennsylvania Dutch. I have some German in me heritage. I always wanted to have a beautiful property back in Pennsylvania. And when I was self-employed as an entertainer, can I be honest? I wanted to travel the world. And I didn't really know the way, not, not, not in poverty, not in staying at Motel 6s in worst of circumstances, staying with people who would rape you and beat you and steal from you. I'm not talking about the lowly ways of life. I'm talking about royalty treatment. Okay? I do music. I don't like to get into the mundaneness of the way that a lot of American culture is, though it might not be understood was an entertainer, I thought, I don't want to just be a local schmo, okay, and I don't want to, God, God was working on me, you don't want to just play music to entertain somebody's 
fucked up idea of what you should be playing in the moment. That's what a lot of people end up doing. They have a set list. Hey, come on, we're like the human jukebox. And we've been so programmed to care more about other people than ourselves. I'll play my guitar for you after all the years of study that I've done. And when I get into the truth, the truth is I want to be a great songwriter too. And I don't want just one hit, okay? And God, I want to honor you with my life. I believe that's why I was created. Okay, I believe that's why I exist, was to honor God with my life, not man's idea. And the United States governor's fucking goddamn government's idea of fucking life is fucked up. Especially if they left the Bible out of everything. Oh, they did. Public schools. Okay. The education system that we're paying for. Is that the right way to live, government? Well, good luck ever paying that debt back. Why don't we just all pay the debt off in the blood of Jesus Christ? See? And when you get into the word of God, everything should be free, and our servanthood should be for God, the truth inside of our brain. All right? And we shouldn't be handing money, okay, to people overseas, you know, for the high gas uh, prices. Okay, is it the Middle East? Is that what they say? Why are we giving all of our money overseas? Here you go, we don't need it. Maybe that's God saying that is right. Take all of your money. Hey, every American that is alive and hearing this message today, take all of your money. We ought to have a national day of every American draining their account and their pockets and everything else and give the money to the overseas. And then what? Tell them if they step on our soil again, they're going down deeper than the Titanic did, because they're the prostitutes of the earth, people who are selling what belongs to God, and if you get into the word of God, it belongs to all of us, okay, am I wrong about that, leave a comment down below, hey governor, am I wrong about that, should I be giving you my money if I go to work, okay, I've been driving around a car <laughs> that the power that be up there has taken a laser of some sort, and before my eyes, the clear coat is now gone. Is your paint job fading out, or is it being targeted by some group of people who have nothing else to do but be cruel to humans? I wonder what NASA knows about that, considering the laser lights are coming from way up there where they say there's no other life forms. Not for how far away? Distant, 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 a human being could never acknowledge that. We don't know what else is out there, but there's planets that were at some point. And maybe someday, planet Earth, God lets me know, will be something. Another image they show people and say that it was much longer ago than it really was. I don't want to get in on that subject, but with that being said, going through a lot here, trying to figure things out. One thing I loved about Columbus is there was a lot of people in the lesbian, gay, and uh, transsexual community out here. So, I, and, and, and I love diversity, so I love that opportunity that I got to meet. A wide group of people. Drag queens. Side of our head. Maybe butchy ones too. <laughs> I could explain a lot of things. We got a little bit of everyone inside of our head. Our brain. Is that a thought? Or is that another life form? Yes, it is. I see it. It's inside there if I were to do an x ray vision. All right, so I don't want to make this about that. We're going to go down here and check it out. And um, hopefully nobody screams at me.
okay. If not, uh, if they do, then uh, as that one guy, Geraldo, is it, he said, keep the camera rolling. <laughs> to this day, whenever I do this, I try to keep that attitude in my brain. I was not a huge, I think it was Geraldo, I don't even know if that was his name, I'm, I wasn't a huge, but my mom watched him, and I would sit down on the uh, sofa arm, the arm, I would sit on it sometimes, she told me not to do that, <laughs> don't sit on the arm, sit on the cushion, <laughs> you know, um, so anyway, but I would still do it once in a while, and uh, until she would tell me about it, because I would just do it, and I would tell her I'm standing more on my feet, because I wouldn't like sit fully down. Um, because I was getting ready to leave the apartment and, uh, she would be watching it. And I remember seeing that. I don't remember what episode it was or if it was many, but he at least said it one time. And that has always been something that something has stuck in my head, stuck in my head to keep the cameras rolling. It makes me laugh, you know, and I hope that I never have to go through some of the abuse evidently that he did in trying to capture video. Alrighty, here we go. I got the air conditioner on. Look. I am really, really excited that summer is here. I worked this many years in the recording studio. I started off with just one album in mind. I was done by November that year. Okay, 2019. And then I started doing other things like making things right in my life and then doing album art and then I started getting to the point of wanting to record more I don't want to record maybe like other people at later times it's not that I never want to record I just don't want to do a bulk load of stuff it's not the way I planned I don't even live somewhere I really wanted to because the United States government and we all have learned didn't have a plan that we could apply action promptly which I'm learning Okay, in love is a disrespect to the entire kingdom of heaven, God, the real living God, not man's fucked up idea of what God is. If we got into that, we would realize that what? For those who believe at least in the Christian faith in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, gay doesn't exist and neither does male or female, but obedience, okay? And let's face it, you want to be all out you in love to the fuller of your potential that you can and God permits. That's why I would tell people I'm not gay. I have a penis. That's what the world calls it. I don't. <laughs> I have an Audi. Okay. I don't view things the same way. And also, I have learned this whole bottom and top thing, and you know, God lets you know that sometimes there's a, you know, a blend of anything goes <laughs> for some people. Some people are all out all the time like that, not me. <laughs> you know. uh, 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 I am a born-again virgin. I have realized that... Uh, I know once you get into the, I, 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 I'm sorry I ever wished that I was someone else. I, I, I wish that it was born a female instead of a male. Okay. These are things that aided me in my coming to be so far. And I'm grateful they were in my head because it is the truth. And I realize more and more every day, in my opinion, if I were to talk to somebody and they were to ask me, Tracy Lynn, about certain circumstances, I would say, what a man, meaning man generalized word, not man meaning as described by the world, meaning what we've been told. Mind, a nickname for mankind, man. See, this had me stumbling for a while because there was somebody very special in my life that felt that in the Bible, when it comes to the writings, that maybe God was kind of like a chauvinist, if you would. And it's understandable, her perspective. Especially if you're confused with the whole man part. Man is head of household, is that it? 
God better be the center point. God has had it all. Again, mankind. And when you're talking about household, are you talking about a house like that? Or are you talking about this household? So much to talk about. We get into the Word of God. It's marvelous. And some people would say, you know, there is eternity in that conversation. And I would hope it's a delightful one. That you're going the right way. You're not going to the flames of hell. You know? Or into anything perceived as uh, lifeless. <laughs> but you're entering into more heavenly er presence. So with that being said, uh, I realize that a lot of my struggle is I don't like entering in into another human being. Something in my head goes on that says, no, not my interest. <laughs> However, I have learned. <laughs> ah, it's not too hard to adapt a way of thinking. If you are a bottom, is what I've learned in the gay community, strictly, you know, very firm, the greatest. <laughs> you know. When the chemistry is right, okay, it really does matter. And it, man, does it matter. You know, glorious, oh, it can be, even if it is a sin, okay, that you're indulging in. The truth of the matter is what? Out of respect for self, your love for God, that's why I say I am a born again virgin. Because when I'm honoring God to the better of my to the better of my ability, when I'm human so I can slip and fall once in a while. When the moment's right. <laughs> I'll ask God for forgiveness for both parties. Okay. God, will you forgive us if I ever, ever slip and fall again into sin <laughs> when it's acknowledged that it'll be exactly the way I like it? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And if it's not, give me the ability to run my ass off as fast and far away from the person as I can. Hallelujah. Please give me the ability to be able to take care of myself, please, because I have learned that it sucks when the other person takes care of you at least a portion of the time, amen? You want to be able to take care of yourself. God, take care of you through you. Now here's the thing, check this out. There goes a cute little doggy. That's cute. That's a really cute dog. We're gonna go over here and check this out. And I just want to say that I say that I've been drinking some virgin uh, pina coladas, and I'm learning. Oh, what I like about it because I like kind of like a slushy drink, but I don't want to go get a slushy. Oh, that's. I don't want that in my body. Okay, I do eat and drink sugary stuff and different things that I already know I shouldn't and I do once in a while, maybe more than I care to, especially if I'm traveling and I want to get going now. But I've been um, uh, making frozen drinks. Okay, mixed drinks. I love pina coladas a lot and strawberry blackberries. And I love the taste of banana. Okay, coconut. Um, and I'm learning different creative ways of making like frozen blended drinks um, with no alcohol. No alcohol that I'm aware of in my drinks, and I love them. You know, uh, I do a lot of juicing. I do eat meat once in a while. Sometimes some meats a little bit more than I care to. I'm not against people living the way they want to. I can handle a lot of what people might think kind of painful. It's just that I want to be better. You know, I, I prefer to be honest about the fact that my idea of being better for me is uh, taking better care of self and the ideas that have been formed and, you know, I'm not the better example. And, and, and a lot of people that you would maybe respect will say that when speaking at a biblical functionality is that they're not the, 
example. Jesus Christ is the example. I say I am not the best example unless you're talking about somebody who at least wants to do life maximizing their, to their fuller potential. I want to be the best version of Tracy Lynn that I can be. That's what God has shown me. And to other people, they may say, well, think about it. They spit on Jesus Christ. And that's not the person I idolize. That's the person that I'm in awe of. God. Love. And too many times in life, people focus on the slaughter and the happening, the occurrence, to the point where he was nailed to the cross. When Jesus, did he speak to the prostitute? He said to go get, did he, did he, did he say go get others? And bring them forth, or I have a message? Is it something like that? Then he went to heaven, right? I will be going to heaven, but for you, you will remain. Well, there's reasons for you to be here. And here's the thing, what do you think? Go into all the details, did he? how he was going to get to heaven. And I have really been putting all this together with where you are psychologically and then in your studies of scripture and, okay, and exercising what is taught in scripture. That heaven isn't after the world shows us a head stuff. Okay? And it's not that heaven is all around us. If anything, it's almost like the beginning of a seed of heaven. And it is the absolute truth. It is and contains knowledge. Okay. We have been given free will. And God lets us know to always choose life. But God, when I choose the life that I want, this is when the world around me is either in disagreement or they're abusive to me. He says, when cops put money in my hand and say I'm guilty, and I did it to myself, this is when you end up in a tiny little apartment living by a dumpster with limited parking, roaches all over your kitchen counter, bed bugs all over your bed, flies <laughs> buzzing around your head. For the visual that they showed me in ministry outreaches has formed in my apartment in some manner and it scares the shit out of me because I still don't know any other way and I say, God, if I had fucking money, I could make choices in a serious state of existence to happen now. I want to speak to a high rank, something that is, if it's not on this planet, you gotta meet me at least part way, yeah. The Bible says I'm entitled to a hell of a lot different than I have received my whole life. If I just believe in the name of Jesus. And I went through my moments of doubt because of the excruciating pain. And I have cried out, please help me. you go get a job like everyone else? <laughs> well, why don't you dress like everybody else does? Why don't you do what they're doing? And I can't. I would fucking die on impact. <laughs> you know, I don't think people believe me. I can't do life the way other people do it. I can't. I've tried to do it. And I've ended up with my face on the floor in a puddle of tears and vomit in my hair. <laughs> Smell it. I can't do it. Yeah. There's been time. Have you ever had intercourse with somebody and felt the vomit sensation coming on? I have. 
And it's not about whether or not the other person is attractive or not attractive. Something else is going on inside my head. I can't control it. And sometimes I wonder if I don't have twins or triplets inside my brain. My brother or my sister inside of me could be. And we are quite the family. Because I want him to do something, I don't want to do it. And some of them may be very determined. They do not want to engage. <laughs> that is distasteful. As I would hear thoughts. <laughs> that is fucking gross. <laughs>